The Treasury Department briefed members of Congress Sunday night. Senate Banking Chairman Sherrod Brown and the highest-ranking Democrat on the House Financial Services Committee, Congresswoman Maxine Waters, released a statement saying they will aim to focus on strengthening guardrails for the largest banks. So for more, Congresswoman Maxine Waters joins us now. Good to see you. Thank you for being here. Uh, a lot to get to. Um, the biggest question I think a lot of people have is that the government says that this won't cost anything for taxpayers. But how is that possible? I mean, couldn't banks just pass this on to their consumers who are also taxpayers in some way? Well, uh, actually, we're very fortunate that we have a federal insurance program that protects, uh, you know, depositors up to $260,000. But that is a premiums that are paid in by the banks, and it is well funded. And so that's where that money is coming from. But is there a way that these banks could somehow pass that on to the consumer? Well, you know, you could think that way when you think about businesses and you think about how uh, they earn money. You can think that they could raise prices, et cetera, but we see no signs of that at this point at all. Uh, the money was there. Uh, it's in the insurance fund. It's been paid for already, and we don't see any way uh, that that's going to increase taxpayers at this time in any way. And do you think that all regional banks like SVB should be given this same federal backstop? And do you think the government um, should ensure all unsecured deposits? I mean, even those beyond that 250000 mark? Well, you know, we have basically done that at this point for the uninsured. We not only have uh, assured the depositors who are uh, insured and those who are not insured, uh, at this emergency, in this emergency. And so we're going to have to think about what we're going to do uh, in the future. We're going to have to think about whether or not we're going to look at a plan uh, that will ensure all depositors, a partial plan, what have you. We need to take a look at what has happened, all of our experiences. We need to be, uh, you know, we're going to hold hearings very soon. And uh, whatever legislation we need to do to ensure the public so that the public can have confidence in our banking systems. And so we're going to try and, and, and do what is necessary uh, to make sure uh, that our banks are safe, sound and secure. So essentially what you're saying, though, is that you could imagine a scenario in which all regional banks are covered this way. Sure, I could imagine that scenario. It's only an imagination at this point, uh, because when you get to these kinds of policies, the same people that you saw involved in this extraordinary effort uh, to do what we have done uh, to make sure that there was no real contagion, uh, we talk about it, we talk through it, everybody has something to offer, and then we'll come up with a uh, final solutions. So it is not one person. It is, you know, the feds, it is the... Um, FDIC, it is the Treasury, it's the White House, it's the Congress, uh, and we figure out what we have learned, what we have done, and what we need to do. It is a collaborative effort. With that said, I mean, are you concerned that the government stepping in here to protect those depositors might encourage or condone these banks to take greater risks? No, as a matter of fact, we'll look at uh, how we define risk now. I'm going to be wanting to have um, whether or not we're going to get back into stress testing and how that's done. But risk will be taken, uh, a, you know, a good review of. And so I'm not worried uh, that things are going to slip through. I think we're going to learn from our experience and we're going to come up with solutions. What we did in a short period of time is extraordinary. What the American people saw was the government working, people working together to solve a problem and avoid a catastrophe. And I am just so pleased about that. Uh, everybody from the president, again, to the feds, to the secretary of the treasury and to Gutenberg over the insurance uh, agency. Yeah. And uh, I think I think that that should be seen as a very positive thing. What is possible for government to do uh, to solve problems? 
And as I mentioned, you are the ranking member of the Financial Serv Services Committee. The chairman, Patrick McHenry, uh, said that this is the first Twitter-fueled bank run and that he has confidence in our financial regulators and the protections already in place to ensure the safety and soundness of our financial system. Do you agree that that is true? Um, and what else can Congress do to prevent this from happening again? Well, uh, Mr. McHenry and I are going to be holding our first hearings, and we're going to form those hearings based on the information that we think we need in order to move forward and ensure that we have the strongest banking system that we can possibly have. And so we have not done that yet. Uh, we'll have our hearings. Uh, we will be talking with the various agencies, and we will make sure uh, that we cover everything that we can possibly cover uh, to ensure, again, that we don't have a systemic failure in our banking system. Elizabeth Warren has attributed this to the rollback of regulations in 2018 under the Trump administration. Do you agree with that? Well, let me just say this. Um, the rollback was troublesome for me and some of us who worked on Dodd-Frank reforms. However, we have to take a look at what is happening in our world today. Uh, for example, uh, we have these startups. Uh, they are different uh, in terms of seeking out uh, support and loans. We have banks uh, that don't deal with them directly uh, because they don't understand some of this creativity and it's not easy for the startups to get loans. And what we saw was Silicon Valley Bank uh, that uh, was the go-to bank uh, for these startups and they were able to support them. Many have become successful. They have created jobs. Uh, the uh, bank was handling payroll and we wanted to make sure uh, that uh, the people and the staffs that are in these startups get paid and we've done that. And so I think we're gonna look at all of this and we're gonna make some decisions. I'm not at any conclusions now about what we will do, what we won't do, but I am very much focused on and believe uh, that we've done an extraordinary job in a short period of time and that we will work to see if we have to redefine risk, if we need to have more stress tests, and whether or not we need to make sure there's not the kind of deregulation uh, that would cause a collapse uh, by a bank. All right, we will look forward to those hearings, certainly, Congresswoman Maxine Waters. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. You're so welcome, and thank you.